Hello everyone and welcome back to another cast brought to you by StarCast TV. It's this round of 16 and we've got Best versus Action facing off in the StarCast Star League. Helping me with this cast is of course the one and only It Is Machine. What's up man? Hey, not too much man. Naoken, good to, good to be here, good to be commentating with you. And yeah man, picked a, a pretty good match here up and coming to, to commentate together best uh pretty prolific protoss player i when i think best i think reaver control you know he's kind of up there with snow and uh has some of the best uh no pun intended pvz <laughs> of all time and then we sure have action i mean clearly one of the strongest one of the favorites one of the you know zergs i personally try to emulate um you know he's no slouch he's i mean he could do it all right he's uh, such an ag uh, like an aggro zerg that really knows how to take it to uh some of these top tier protosses so um not going to be a an easy match for either player here yeah that's for sure it's funny you mentioned best is so good protoss versus terran but did you know his best matchup is protoss versus zerg uh, I mean, I'm not surprised, actually, <laughs> to be honest with you. I didn't realize it was his best matchup, but, um, you know, I, I, I've I, seen him play it quite a bit, and he looks like a menace to deal with, for sure. Yeah, what I like about Best is, even though people think of him as Gateway Man in Protoss vs. Terran, he actually plays a lot of different styles, especially in Protoss vs. Zerg. Whenever I watch him play, it's not just Corsair opener every time. Sometimes he's mixing, mixing in Dark Archon. And versus Action specifically, he seems to really like the Dark, Con, Dark Archon for some reason. And I think the ASL two seasons ago, they had an epic, or actually an epic series, really, where it was just a massive slugfest in like three out of the four games. And Dark Archon Maelstrom really did a lot of work. We're getting a look at the bracket here. We see that we've got Best versus Action coming up. Ample versus Beast is going to round out our top side of the bracket. And then we've got all Terran and Protoss at the bottom side. Really looking forward to that as a Terran player. But today, PVZ, and I have high hopes for this because of what I was saying with uh, ASL a couple seasons ago. Best versus Action. I highly recommend that series um, from a couple seasons ago if you haven't seen it. The Nemesis game, absolutely wild. The Heartbreak Ridge game, also I remember that clearly. Uh, definitely recommend those two games in particular. Right on. Yeah, last time, uh, you know, obviously we we're commentating Cop for Soma as well. Such a great series. Um, you know, despite Soma winning 2-0, they ended up being pretty close games. So, yeah, definitely excited to get this series started as well. Should be a, a close one between these two. Yep, so of course we've got to take a look at our maps with this uh, tournament being so different. You can get a lot of weird maps, and speaking of weird, we've got Jungle <laughs> Story, and then we've got Luna, which I would say was kind of more, is pretty much standard, at least from what I've seen from the remake. And then of course Vermeer. I actually think everybody, well I'm gonna, I guess I'll speak for myself. I really like Vermeer, but I, in, in general I feel like a lot of players like Vermeer, and I hope we get there to that map because both of these players macro like crazy and I would love to see like a 30 minute game especially from action where he can just be macroing you know those like 10 hatches all at once for sure Vermeer 16 base map you know every single base has a gas to it like it is just the ideal for late game PVZ right if you're especially if you're your best and you have a tendency to go late game Dark Archon Archon Storm you know, Reaver, Arbiter uh, could be yeah. a big, big issue for action uh, should they get to that kind of a, a late game stage. But yeah, Jungle Story 2, Neo Luna, you weren't joking, man. These are uh, these are some different maps. Uh, you know, <laughs> Luna, I, I, anytime I see Luna, I just think, please don't spawn top right <laughs> back in the day, you know? Like there was just such a massive gap at that natural expansion for for entire entire groups of bio to just walk around your sunkens and go into your main <laughs> oh yeah. man yeah that map was the, was wild i i don't remember top right that much but i do remember top left being the same thing they just literally walk right by your defense straight into your main i'm like wow what a build you're <laughs> yeah. great what a player so yeah, a cruiser player. telling us 
that Jungle Story was best pick, so was Vermeer, and Luna was actually Action's pick. So interesting mm. that we've got Jungle Story being picked by Protoss. Uh, let's get into game one as our players are ready and just get straight into the action. <laughs> The action, right? With the player action. <laughs> Another pun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's going to be difficult. <laughs> okay, in the top left, we have our brown throat off. It is best. And spawning in the top right as the orange Zerg would have action. Yeah, and already from the get go, you can see just slightly on. Well, the screen that we just saw that this map what makes it a little bit interesting is this is low ground main so you got high ground natural i imagine that would make it hard sort of to bust you know to relate this to a current map tempest you know hydra busting into high ground on the tempest not very ideal i would say machine what do you think about hydra busting on maps like that well, I should try it often enough, but yeah, it yeah. doesn't seem to work. <laughs> yeah, it's it's always going to be tough. Um, you know, at, at the same time, Protoss has to control that high ground, right? You know, obviously, Best is good enough. He's going to know to take that expansion. What's funny to me is when you see those Protosses sometimes try to go two gate main on a low ground main base, and if that fails, right, you're just stuck in your main the whole time, but... Obviously, best going for that quick pylon at the natural, and we see a nine pool uh, started out of action. And I don't see the probe moving towards the natural, so, so okay, there we go. Um, I'm, I'm sitting there looking, I'm like, dude, are we just dead? Please tell me it's not a 12 nexus. But here comes the probe finally, but this is not an over pool, this is a nine pool. I'm not sure if actually cannons will get up in time. I guess I, I've never they played should. this map. I yeah, I assume it should, but I've never played this map, so I'm not sure how far or how close this rush distance is. It looks, you know, quite normal, but thinking about how far the probe has to travel to get to the natural in time, like the forge should be done right, but there's no movement towards the natural. Uh, yeah, you're right. We're just now seeing a probe run to that natural. Fortunately, Best is double scouting, right? So he's being, uh, he's not being greedy at all about this. Does recognize the uh, pool there. Nice drone block. But actually, two cannons going to go down, and Best is completely fine here. Okay, we'll see. This seems close. Okay, well, now he's 100% fine because the lanes are hanging around for this pylon. And we are just going to have expansion follow-up. Yeah, uh, pretty standard game here, I'd say. Honestly, not a bad position for either player, right? I think Protoss is happy to make a couple of cannons and... Uh, face off against nine pool those cannons likely to come into uh, You know be useful later on should there be a hydra bust or something similar um, Wow action going. Oh, no way. He's gonna try to go for this. He is he's actually gonna get a couple Oh my god the blocking <laughs> on that probe was insane Yeah, that that was nuts, you know It would be different if he had like three or four probes doing that but he did that with just one. Now, as soon as I saw this drone at bottom right in Hatchery, I'm I'm a little excited, Machine, because this is this could be what I always look for in PVZ, the split map style. And if there's anybody that we want to watch play split map that's not named Larva, I feel like it's got to be action, right? This guy's just crazy with the macro. Absolutely. It's always a strong play, especially on these maps where there is these high ground naturals, right? Like pretty much once you secure that high ground third, it's just going to lead you to a fourth, which is, you know, going to move on from there. So I think this is a great call from action. And yeah, I, I think we're setting ourselves up for, uh, you know, pretty epic game from the start here. Layer Oops. first action. Okay. Yeah, we got the lair coming, no hydrogen, but speaking of setup, that natural gateway placement for best, that doesn't seem like the most ideal positioning there, but I could be wrong. I, it just looks like the zealot is going to pop out at the bottom and have to loop around back towards the cannons. Yeah, it definitely does. Uh, I'm not sure. I was wondering when he placed that, why he would place that there, but I, I really don't know, to tell you the truth. Yeah, and maybe there's a gap there. 
uh, at the bottom. But either way, it looks quite weird, but I guess because it is Jungle Story, similar layout to Tempest with the high ground natural, he's not going to get punished, I guess. We don't see the Hydrogen. Act the probe, even though it died, Best had already had a second probe on route towards the main, so he gets off a good scout and sees that, hey, this is just normal Spire. Zealot moved across the map to bottom right. I don't know if he actually confirmed that there's a hatchery there, but for some reason he thinks that there is. I think he, he's pretty much deduced it. Like, the probe scouting outside the natural sees no hatchery at the mineral only. You know, there's an island uh, mid-right, so it has to be that bottom right expansion, unless he just made a base completely cross map, right? So, you know, he's, he's using his brain here. Got... Okay, I was like, dude, I don't think you can run by two links into two cannons, but we do have a two zealot attack at bottom right. With those four links out of position, these two zealots may actually be able to get some damage done. They don't kill a drone, but they do at least force them to lose some mining. Yeah, forces the lost mining, gets great scouting. This is always annoying, uh, you know, but obviously action is just so good. He's not going to let a, you know, let a couple drones run in and kill, or a couple zealots run in and kill any drones. Spire building inside the main. Uh, we also see a fourth and fifth hatchery uh, in production here for action. So everything looking pretty standard here. Corsair scouting the main of action and uh, looking to maybe catch a uh, overlord here. Fellas that don't have any range. It was kind of weird how they just shot through the mineral, you know? Yeah, that, that was kind of weird. My <laughs> zerglings don't do that. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that drone has been sent to the main now. Is he really going to build a fourth base with six hatch? That That's seems, what it looks like. That seems exceptionally greedy. I mean, he is supply block, so maybe it's just something to do with the money. Actually, no, we're, we're not even going to see it yet. There, uh, they killed at least one overlord. I saw it on the right side that killed, and the scourge. Wow, those bled off. That's not great. And we do have Mutas, at least one, trying to kill off these zealots. Does get a couple zerglings for it and some scouting. He sees the drone count. He sees the scourge and the Muta. Evo chamber being produced bottom right. So, uh, you know, I'd say worthwhile information for the trade. Well, I already think that action's in a good spot. And the reason I say that is just looking at the drone count we've got 31 yeah. to 40 i've seen enough games now where if zerg is even relatively close with this amount of production it seems like they just explode unless you can do something about them so if best wants to keep action in check i feel like he's got to do something in the next couple minutes he's got his plus one weapon power spike but he only has four zealots and that's definitely not going to be enough yeah he's got to get moving I mean, I think he's waiting for that critical mass of uh, Corsair, right? He's He needs enough to start being able to one-shot these potential scourges that he's already scouted on the map. He's seen Muta, so he knows there's at least some sort of, uh, you know, focus on uh, air production here for action. But actually, now that I realize it, it's only a solo Muta. Yeah, it's just one. Looks like this was a mind game from action so far but he does have very little gas so maybe mutas are being built somewhere else now this is an interesting move it's gonna be five zealots and one archon archons do have range but i don't think there's enough support for this to actually do a killing blow but maybe i'm wrong as zealots stream across the map with it there's only a single sunken just lings there's no hydras yeah this ain't a timing i don't know what's going on here but Either way, he sees the solo sunken and decides to back off. <laughs> I guess the SimCity was a little bit too hard to get past, but that SimCity looks like it should be easy to deal with. And again, there's still not a lot of defense. Just now, the first two Hydras pop out, only a single sunken. The Archon, get in there, man. Get some kills off. He's starting to pop those drones. Oh, in the back. all the score just got evaporated. A little bit of miscontrol there from action. He's gonna lose all his overlords here. I mean, is this game? 
this looks like it could be game over. Like, yes, Axum has a lot of hatches, but he can build any defense, really. He has no way to get all of his units across the map and save this base in time. Also, the Evolution Chamber is there. If the Evolution Chamber dies and he loses plus one weapon on his Hydras, oh, that would be massive. Yeah, best not doing the best job at kind of controlling these zones. Okay, it looks like at least he's going to get the uh, Evo Chamber, but he was splitting a lot of focus. Uh, finally, enough Hydras seem to be rallying in that he's, it looks like he's going to hold this, but uh, yeah, not before some significant damage has been dealt. Well, that was that was actually a clutch hold right there with the drone body blocking for the Hydras. Watching those seven or eight zealots pretty much die for free at the end, that was a really good defense. What looked like was going to be game ending at least prolongs the game. However, supplies still heavily in favor of best, but look at this. He's sneaking bottom left, and I don't think Action has any idea of that. And even if he does, what can he do about it? Yeah, not much right now. We are in full recovery mode. He's got to get another Evo chamber up. He's got to get his upgrades moving. At least he has that additional hatchery bottom right. So, uh, you know, producing, reproducing that drone count uh, should be a little quicker than normal. Um, I mean, at least that's a pretty serious amount of Hydra. Yeah. So best, best has to take uh, everything uh, very seriously here. Good scouting. Well, I guess the good thing for action is because he has so many hydras well as i was gonna say this i was gonna say i don't really think that he needs to build anymore instead he could just use what he has mega power in terms of drones maybe get up going to lurkers and just camp 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 but it seems like he wants to attack somewhere with the amount of hydras that he's building there's only one high templar bottom left but obviously action doesn't even know about bottom left yet so looks like he will be streaming into uh the natural here of best there's one thing I always say, Naoki, in, in Zerg vs. Protoss, it's don't attack into Cannon Storm. Yeah. It is just how you lose units, how you lose Hydralis. So, we'll have to see uh, if Action takes my advice here. Oh, he's going in. Oh, he gets a Templar. Well, he forced it. He might... He may be thinking like he can actually end it here because there's not that much Storm and there's not that much Zealots either. Not much Cannons. That's a good dodge out of nowhere. Action explodes in terms of Hydras. Five Zealots from the back, but these Zealots aren't enough. Yeah, not even close. Where are the units? Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. Future dudes are rallying in here. Probes being pulled off the line. Oh, there was some flanking oh. Zealots. Actually, actually, they may, they, there may be enough stuff for Protoss because I just noticed Protoss, first off, has supply block action into uh, Oblivion here. But I saw that Protoss' plus one armor kicked in. Also, obviously, has plus one weapon, but maybe not. Yeah, maybe not, man. Looks like Hydra's are pretty good, apparently. Oh, but then I say that a couple more storms come in and rock this Hydra force. And we finally do have enough Zealots on the high ground. Uh, rallying Templar moving in from the bottom left. That should at least key off to action that there's another base uh, bottom left. Ooh, oh very nice gosh. storm. And a very other nice storm. Jeez. Yeah, okay. clutch, clutch storm saved the day, but the real heroes of this are those Corsair. Because oh. if there's no supply block here, action would just win. But there it is, GG, and Best ends up taking the game. Man, what a crazy start to this one, right? Like, I mean, Action did bleed off his first six Zerglings to that epic probe block, solo probe block to kind of kick things off. But then, as you said, like, when, you know, the game started to stabilize a little bit, it seemed that Action was in a fine spot. He had plenty of Hydralis, they just weren't in position to defend bottom right. And that's where a lot of that early damage kind of stemmed from funny after the big attack to bottom right which i thought did game ending damage really it, when action made his big attack to top left the su supplies were like 95 to 85 i don't know <laughs> how these zergs always recover their econ and their their supply count so well but it was it was a good attack if he didn't get supply block there i think he could have won the game but he never really dealt with those corsairs because as you mentioned at the attack at bottom right the, none of the scourge connected um, if he was able to get a couple of Corsairs there and also, you know, pick off a couple Corsairs with his last attack, maybe he could have ended the game because he wouldn't have been supply blocked, but 
You know, it is what it is. Best takes the game, but at least Action will be getting his map now, which is going to be Luna. Yeah, Neo Luna, man. This is always a fun one. I uh, love that Twilight tile set just because you don't see it as often anymore, so a little nostalgic. Uh, but yeah, with uh, Action's map pick, uh, you know, being up next, we'll have to see what he has planned. Yeah, I'm sure he's got something. Well, I'm, I'm sure he may have the split map planned again because this is another map where you can build a hatch on the low ground you know easily defend that and take your main and i have high hopes for that since he tried to pull it out on jungle story but we've got cross spawn this time with action in the top right and best in bottom left do you think action may go for nine pool again is he someone that strikes you as like a nine pool player absolutely i think it's all he does man he's is it? just such an aggro player yeah i he's I, I think he nine pulls quite often, uh, to be fair. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm kind of expecting it from him. Not that obviously he knows, you know, so many different builds, but he has a tendency to try to just get in Protoss's face early on. He does have a build that I really like in Zerg versus Terran, which is early pool, whether it's a nine pool, over pool, or 12 pool, and then double expand off of it. So maybe we will see similar build this game but it looks like if i'm reading this correctly yeah. we already have nine drones overlord already built yeah. so at minimum or at worst it'll be overpool yeah which is a, a pretty standard build i mean you know the, the nine pool didn't really end up paying off last game so why not kind of change it up here uh we're also getting a completely different build out of best here it looks like it's going to be a nine gate opener this time 11 hatch. and i see this more often these days why do you think zergs are 11 hatching so often it's basically the best counter to nine gate here uh given this scenario you know a, a, it's a little questionable if you can get zerglings out in time to defend a nine gate uh with 12 hatchery but with 11 hatchery it's just fast enough that you know there's just there's no way you're going to be caught off guard without any zerglings to to handle any uh, early zealot pressure. So um, just based on build orders, I want to say this is already advantage action. Okay, and that drone's going out. I was going to say, go top left, my man. Go up there, because if it goes top left, I feel like we could have that third hatch at the natural. But he's going for a cross scout. Interesting. He, he knows the timing of this probe somehow. He just knows it. Yeah, he's so good. You know, something that I've been implementing in my play is, you know, obviously cross scout, not the most ideal scout pattern, but what it does do is if you cross scout and you find them first, well, even if you don't find them, you know that, hey, like if they were top left, you know that, or, or bottom right, hey, they're they're close position, so the zealot's going to get there even faster, right? So you can respond with, like, let's say, building six lings instead of four. You know, if they were cross one, maybe you don't necessarily need all six. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's very true. Like four zerglings instead of six because you're just trying to maximize that drone count. It's funny, he was very cocky with this and he built his third hatchery before even making any zerglings. And still the zerglings are gonna be on time, it looks like. Yeah, so he's taking advantage of that lucky scout that I was just talking about. But look at the stutter step, Micro Man. Already kills two out of the lings, almost three of the lings. I think that's fine, given the trade for the probe. Uh, action's got to be feeling good, honestly. That I mean, the best had some great control there, to be sure. But what matters is this drone count has not been touched. But it does force out more links, which could have been drones. So far, True. we're just playing a loop-de-loop -loop around the mineral line. And he gets into position again. I, he wanted to take that fight. Oh, he gets a four. Lings with that single zealot. Yeah, that was very, very nice control there at a best, as expected for a cross spawn zealot. Oh, two zealots uh, making their way mid right right now here for best. So action going to need to find these and be able to to handle them. And a lot of players actually they just move out, but they don't actually attack with it. This time around, he is actually going, and it's risky because the Overlord sees like, dude, first off. 
you don't even have anything in your wall. And second, you don't even have a cannon. So what the heck are you doing? But with the Zealot popping out in the nick of time, probe there to block, these two Zealots shut down the third base. Yeah, he's just too good, man. He's Best is too good with his timings. He knew he was going to have a Zealot in time with that wall. Meanwhile, Stargate already underway. And yeah, I, this is annoying for action. Yeah, even though he hasn't killed any drones or anything, there's a lot of links to build. And he's shutting down the mining time at the mid right base uh, pretty considerably. Even more links at the natural. Okay, so we do have Spire coming down, and it's relatively on time with the Corsair. So I feel like this game, he may not even lose a single Overlord. Yeah, he might not. What he has lost is drones. Ooh. Uh, you know, it's 23 drones to the 31 probes so far of best. Not getting it's... in, sir. Yeah, yeah, good blocking. There you go, so... Now action, I'm sure, will start powering really hard. In best base, I see second cannon coming down. Unlike last game, I don't see a really fast second gate. So he's just slowly going to be building out of one... Uh, at least for now. So I expect him to put down like four gates in the next minute or so, but for now, no real production for him. Yeah, adding a second cannon even to be sure at that wall, just in case this is some kind of a ling all in, uh, which we know it isn't, but uh, still not a bad call here for best. Uh, Corsair moving across the map, uh, likely going to just scout that spire timing and uh, maybe pick off an overlord from there if he can. That, that is Citadel, but that Citadel, not as fast as some other games that I've seen. It's, it's still okay timing. It's like a 540 Citadel, but I've seen some players go as fast as five minutes, but I guess that's because of the opener with the gateway expand. Either way, five hatches coming down for action. He's got his evolution chamber, I imagine, blocking off mid-right. Still didn't see a Hydra Den anywhere, I don't think. Yeah, no hydrogen anywhere yet. In fact, we're seeing a very fast third gas uh, being taken from action. Whenever I see a gas that quickly, it makes me think this is some type of, uh, you know, mass uh, spire play, whether, you know, a lot of Scourge, heavy Muta. Um, but we'll have to wait and see, I guess. Okay, well, the evolution chamber was not at Midright. It's actually at the natural. That third building at Midright is a sixth hatchery, so we've got massive production for action but he does need to make sure he doesn't take damage because again just like on on jungle story there is basically no defense there's one sunken three mu three mutas this time he learned his lesson machine need more mutas but yeah not a lot of defense really he does have a sunken popping up he he does have some zerglings to fall back on and the three mutas of course i think he's read this right yeah as long I, as go ahead uh, as long as he doesn't lose this hatchery, right? That hatchery did take some serious damage here. Uh, and yeah, great drone control. So it's just slowly popping down one at a time. And I already feel like action has an advantage here. Yeah, that was kind of a confusing attack from Best. I, I thought he was going to act like he was going to attack and turn around. He didn't have any vision, right? Like he didn't send out a Corsair to even see what action was building and he just ran in to mutiling sunken and lost six zealots pretty much for free so now he has no map presence i don't know Th that feels like a big blunder i feel like action's gonna take advantage of it e uh, quickly scourge connect get two of the corsairs that was six scourge on one corsair but there's just so many follow-up scourge that it looks like dust is fine here five corsairs remaining but that will force action to back off, at least for now. Yeah, despite losing the two stairs with five still remaining, he's been building up those stairs quite a while. Maybe he was trying to act like he was going Dark Archon or something by not showing the stairs? I, I don't know, really, but uh, he will still have a big timing pretty soon because he's ramping up that, those gateways. But action, look at his drone count. It's massive. His supply is basically even with Protoss. He's taking another base at bottom right. Bess is in trouble. Yeah, Bess is in some serious trouble here. We see him moving out once again with that Archon. Uh, I don't know what he's going to look to get done this time, though. 
I mean, he is not even close to the same game state as we saw last game. I think he's hoping that action overpowered, maybe? And he can bully his way with an Archon and force bears into the Mutas, but Mutas aren't even caring about the move out there, just at the natural, racking up some probe kills. But here comes best mid right, but it's it's three zealots, one Archon. What what can you do? Lose your units? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> he's just gonna feed him, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it looks like he will f be forced to back off. And I mean, action every time this happens is just taking full advantage of it. We're seeing the seven Corsairs uh, finally follow these Muta. They get a Templar and get out? That's crazy to me. Yeah, it, it actually just seems like this is spiral already out of control. I don't see how Best can really recover here. Uh, the one thing I was thinking was if he somehow built like two DTs and attack bottom right, you know, we know there's a base there. If he could knock down that base, maybe he could try and come back three base versus two. But if this base at bottom right gets up and running, there's, there's no way. And he runs in again and snipes the Templar. Oh, man. That's so painful. I mean, it looks like he's going to lose the Muta finally for this. But, I mean, they've already done their damage. Yeah, he doesn't even care about the Mutas. Like, it's just dead weight for him right now, pretty much. We've got tons and tons of Hydras moving across the map. Again, basically even supply. This time, Zerg didn't have their upgrade reset. So, plus one should be done. And he may just A move him. Yeah, I mean, with no no Templar here, he probably could. If he really wants to play it safe, he can just hold and contain. Um, but, yeah, he, either way, action's feeling great this game. I don't even know what those units are doing up there. I think he thinks that there's a base up at top left, and there isn't. So now all he's done is got his units stuck at top left. I'm not sure if Action saw any of those ground forces move out, so he just might not know about it, and this could be some tricky yeah. counter option where he's just hoping Action A moves into Cannon Storm at the natural, but yeah, I don't know. Well... If there's no base at top left, I guess Bess is thinking, well, it must be at bottom right. So he has his secondary army going to bottom right. Again, it's it's pure zealot, but all the units are out of position, so this base will probably die. Ooh. But top left is dead. Like, this, there's no way zealot are going to be this amount of hydras. Yeah, I'm surprised he's not just backing up into the main. It looks like he is. He's luring those zealots away. And here comes that counter force. Doesn't even know about bottom right, so he's not going to attack there. But maybe he can kill off that hatchery. I don't, know. I don't know, man. He's got six hatches. He's got so much production. Six hydras pop out. The drones can body block for the hydras. Look how many hydras are here. Yeah. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, yikes. <yeah. laughs> this is a disaster game for best. Yeah, this is... Uh, it already feels like it's over somehow. Action has the supply lead in ZVP. That's never a good sign for Protoss. I mean, it's really just the, the couple Muta timings taking off those, uh, you know, so important Templar. I hate it. I hate that move right there where they morph the Lurkers. Uh-huh. And the Zealots continue to attack the Egg. It's like, dude, you do one damage to the Eggs. At least move and attack the Hydras. <laughs> and, and of course, the Lurker Egg doesn't die either. It's, it is so hard to play versus players that do micro like that. Yeah, it really is. I mean, every little bit counts, and action's just so, so good with his unit control and unit retention. Yeah, when I was off racing with Protoss, you know, I, I, I think a few games I was like, well, I wonder if, like, 10-gate pure zealot can work, and a Zerg player did those lurker morphs. Like, I had so many zealots, but he kept morphing lurkers, and I couldn't get past the eggs. I was like, all right, really? Really? This is how, <laughs> this is how strong these hydras are? They are pretty good, man. Pretty good. Well, well this is this has got to be the last ditch effort from Protoss, right? Like he's got a, a huge comp, but Zerg's almost maxed. He's probably gonna just try to hold a third here. I'm assuming he he has to know. There's no way he can get out on the map, but maybe if he gets a third gas going, and action takes a few bad fights. I mean, a few. It's gonna. It's not gonna be any yeah. one at this oh, point. Oh no! I think he's uh, cu he's got cut off now. I think the lurker's gonna set up, and you're just never getting here. That's <laughs> a lot of yellow across the map there. Well, 
He's gonna try and end the game. That is a million hydras, just legitimately a billion hydras. And there's not that much storm. That, like, you could put a storm anywhere and it's gonna hit a ton of hydras, and I still don't think it matters. Like, look, he just stands in the storm and, it, and he's still just owning. It did go pretty well. That was a lot of cannons, Whoa. though. I mean... Well, I guess when you stand and eat, like, five storms, <laughs> you will lose a lot of supply, but look, it's still 20 in favor of, of action. Yeah, it was it was definitely closer than I was thinking this was going to be, but still. Yeah. <laughs> action, I mean, he's just got so much uh, going for him right now. Here we go, round two. Let's see if this will get the job done. He did have one Templar. Oh, oh. Okay, this time he dodges a little bit. But there's only goons really right now. And there it is, GG. What a macro game from Action. I think just after the Zealot timing, I mean, it was kind of over when you're at this level. So a little bit of a blunder there from Best. But I think he can recover in game three. Yeah, he definitely can. Uh, things definitely it just in general went a little more actions way there getting away with the 11 hatch versus a uh, you know cross map nine gate timing uh, you know is is always a strong opener there um, you know we do get to see your Vermeer pick uh, which should be fun actually love Vermeer I, I think Vermeer is actually a really good map like if you want to play a macro map uh, a macro game like if you want to play 30 minutes, 50 minutes, like those types of games, Vermeer would be my go-to because you've got gas at every base. There's like, how many bases on this map? 16? Yep. And you just have massive econ. You know, actually, I played a uh, Terran versus Terran yesterday. I had like 10k, 10k bank. You know, Terran's a little, uh, TVT is a little more boring, you know, when it, it's supposed to be a late game, but TVT or, or Terran versus Zerg, Terran versus Protoss, if you're banking 10k, Man, you can have so many factories, so many racks. You're gonna yep. have so many hatches. Games are epic. Just make so many Muta, drop so many yeah. Ultralis, like, do whatever you want uh, on a big map like this late game. Yep. Yeah. Like, I think actually my favorite game on this map was Sulky versus Mong. Mong tried the mech switch versus Sulky, and it was actually quite effective, but the macro of Sulky was just unreal. I think that was in ASL like five seasons ago or something like that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Sulky is just a monster Zerg, man. He's one of the greats. Uh, Rhett's favorite Zerg of all time, I think, to emulate. Yeah. <laughs> and now he's the champion, right? He just won last yep. season. Yep, yep. He needed so... money and he got that money. <laughs> That's how it goes. Cool. Well, Vermeer, uh, PVZ, best and action. This is going to be good. Yep. So let's get into game three. This is the final map of the series. Winner will be moving on into the round of eight. And in the top right, we have our Protoss. It is best. And in the bottom left, we have action. Another cross map scenario. I like I, uh, it, man. Yeah, I, I mean, I definitely like it too. I wonder if, uh, you know, maybe best feels like action could be favored in these positions, you know, because he is so dominant at that, you know, later stage macro. I mean, we definitely saw it last game. Nothing too crazy happened early on. And then suddenly action had evil even worker count you know with protoss and had uh four bases it felt like out of nowhere uh so you know best really gonna have to watch out for that Ooh, high ground pylon that's kind of cool high ground pylon i feel like this is probably gate expand most likely i think you're right yeah this i, is I do be... go ahead uh, I was going to say gate expand. The thing that's funny about this pylon placement is a lot of times Protoss will make that nine gate on the low ground and then they'll follow it up by making a second gateway in the main and hope that it does get scouted and mm -hmm. actually do a two gate timing. But uh, yeah, we'll have to see what he has planned here. I don't think I've seen that move, but it would be the perfect move here because obviously Overlord is not going the right direction. Now look at this. Despite not even being scouted at all, he's gonna hide this hatch first at the third base. 
I don't see this very often, but I like this play, actually. Um, you know, you're already getting away with something like a 12 hatch, and the fact that it's hidden just makes it that much stronger. Also, the rally on this map to that close third base is near nothing. It's very close by, so um, you can get drones to it quickly. Look at this move also. I was going to say, like, okay, I think the probe saw the Overlord, but what was interesting was this second Overlord path. Like, yes, he's probably going to the third base to make sure he doesn't get cannon rush, but when he sends them both on the left side, you have this situation where the probe comes in and doesn't see an Overlord anywhere and thinks, oh, well, you must be on the right side of the map. And look at the Zealot going bottom right. He's been completely bamboozled. Yep, bamboozled here. Probe's about to confirm nothing, and that should get the Zealot hopefully moving towards bottom left. Uh, but we'll have to see. Yeah, I guess he's realized, oh, uh, he kind of messed up. Yeah. Actually, he, even pulling the Zealot back? Well, see, the thing is, is look at his vision at top left. I don't even know if he scouted enough to see the creep at top left. So yeah. he, he has to consider that, hey, Zerg could actually be top left. They could have gone pool first also, so he needs to turn around. So this gate opener has done absolutely nothing. Yeah, this is a little scary uh, if you're best at this point, because you're right. It, I mean, he showed nine pool game one. It could be a nine pool from either top left or bottom left. And Probe finally going to confirm, yes, there are Zerglings uh, moving out from bottom left. Um, but yeah, this is not ideal here for best to kick things off. Yeah, like, man, that couldn't have gone worse for an opener for best. I'm actually a little surprised to see the forge on the low ground. I thought when he built the pylon in the main, maybe he wanted to build the forge in the main to make sure it doesn't get picked off so he can keep his upgrades. But it is on the low ground, and we do have what is now three zealots plus a probe. And actually, action... I don't think they'll open up wings here. Okay, but if he picks off that one on the right side, he will have. Yeah, that was great surround. Even more Zerglings spawning here at this third base. It feels like he's already held it. Oh man, he lost two Zealots pretty much for free. And that is disaster city for, for best. This is perfect defense from action. I don't think he built additional links either. So he's going to be able to... Oh, he did build more links actually. Okay. Yeah, this is a lot of links. Oh man, I can't believe he left oh, that no. Zolt inside the main too. Oh. Is this a Ling no. timing? Is this, this a Ling like... all-in timing? Yeah, this looks like a Ling all-in timing. But Best spots it and he sees like, hey, you have gas and you're not mining anymore and you built more links and he already had cannons coming. So this is probably just going to be a failed attack. Yeah, this, there's no way this works. Best is already ready. He needs to just drone up and go from there. Well, he's got to go for it because he's built so many links. Oh my gosh, the second Zealot pops out the literal perfect time. And now what do you do as action? Are you going to try and drone out of this? I feel like you have to because there's no way you're getting past two Zealots, two cannons. Yeah, you definitely have to. There's just no way. So he does scout the second cannon. I mean, it's not like he's in an unbelievably bad situation, right? He's 20 drones to 26 probes. He's got three bases at least. So he, he's got something to build from, but yeah, that's, I mean, not ideal for sure. Okay, I'm actually a little surprised that it's a Stargate because the Zealot got in, saw that Zerg is not mining gas. I feel like once you've Ling all in, it failed. You can't go fire anymore because the Corsairs are just gonna rack up, you know, kill after kill after kill. So that means that you're obligated to go into Mass Hydra, and if you just go straight Citadel, Mass Gates, like, isn't that how you shut down Mass Hydra? You can. I, I noticed the pros at the highest level still like to get at least a single Corsair. It's, you know, obviously to force at least some Hydra production, right? Because you can just pick off a bunch of Overlords with that Corsair, <laughs> but also for uh, scouting, obviously. You want to be able go. to, like, see drone count, see, you know, when eventually the Spire's produced or anything like that. So it's it's never really a bad call to go uh, Corsair. It does pick off one Corsair, or one Overlord, already. Speed is coming. And the first, wow, the, the first Hydras are rallied across the map. And if you see the Hydras being rallied, you know you're just getting busted. So all Best really has to do 
get his Templar Archive, get his speed, which he already has coming, and make sure he does not skimp out on cannons. It feels like he'll be good to go. Yeah, he is making some additional cannons here. You can see. Does need to get that Templar Archives down and, and start producing Storm. Um, at the same time, I don't think Best is super worried here. This isn't a ton of Hydras. I don't think this is really a very committed bust out of action, despite the amount of Zerglings we see behind it. He probably just wants to pick off this gateway and see what he can force. Um, but yeah, it, it's actually going to be Best that's going to be getting out on the map here pretty soon with a big uh, Zealot force, I think. Yeah, Best does have think what is now three gateways he had four and action despite the link all in <laughs> is pretty close to even workers he does lack the tech of course but he has his five hatch production he has rushed an evolution chamber so he should be able to match the plus one uh, at a decent time lair is done i didn't see a spire anywhere so i i'm guessing this is for lurker upgrade yeah it, it might be for Lurker upgrade. Uh, he could just be going Mass Hydra to here. He's going to need him to defend the Zealot timing, I believe. Yeah, yeah. it could also be for speed on the Overlords. You don't want to be running into DPs, of course. So maybe it will just be Mass Hydra with speed. And we do have a Zealot engagement. I don't think the Zealots win this fight. No, we'll that was, that's a lot of Zerg. Um, still, he's chewed through at least the, the Zerglings. Getting on top of some of these Hydras, but actually, Best will be pushed off. He did kill more than I, I thought. He did get through the Lings. He did get through a decent chunk of the Hydras. We do have some Zealots skirting the Hydralis into the third base, but the Micro is really good from action, maximizing the amount of damage his Hydras are doing. He needed to get on that drone line with a couple of zealots, and he could have picked off some drones. But, oh well. Yeah, it looks like uh, action's definitely stabilized for now. Oh, a couple zealots in the main, actually, is actually. Yeah, in the main and at the third base. I was wondering why those zealots were at the third base. I'm like, dude, you're just standing there. Like, <laughs> Zerg sees you. But I guess the diversion into the main was the idea. We do have the DT uh, out on the map now, and I don't think think there was an overlord at the third base? Oh, there is. Yeah, so it looks like action should be in good spot. And I noticed earlier he has been doing a decent job of getting overlord scouting outside of his natural two, so he should hopefully be able to catch these DTs before they do any damage. And as I say that, he it looks like he's maybe seen the blur. Nope, nope, I can set it too soon. He missed it. Oh, and you hear that noise. He only he only gets one, so I guess he does minimize the damage. And the DT is stuck now. See you later. Yeah, yeah, not ideal. There we oh. go, machine. Dark Archon. Dark Archon. <laughs> yeah, actually going into game three, I was hoping we would see Dark Archon. Because Bess is really good with Dark Archon, like that's one of his main builds, like it's not like it's a build he only practices 1% of the time or something insane, like there's at least I would say a 30% chance that he goes for it, and we're finally going to see it this time. I think it's great versus Hydras versus Mutas, especially after the second game where Zerg just ran in with those 6 Mutas over and over killing Templars. If you just land a Maelstrom, those Mutas obviously can't make moves like that. Yeah, it definitely deters you know, mass muta production uh, out of Zerg. But I mean, even if, like you said, even even if there isn't muta being produced, Maelstrom's great at killing anything, right? If you Maelstrom a group of lurkers, oh man, it is payday uh, yeah. for Protoss. And there's the five mutas. The, Archon, the Dark Archon, I think, was just morphed. So I don't think he has the energy just yet. Oh, oh. he sees it. Yeah, he did see the Dark Archon. That might make him run away here. Well, he better run. <laughs> yeah. The, the Dark Archon must have the energy, because he's looking. He's fishing, man. Yeah, he definitely wanted him. Wasn't quite able to get it, though. Action is going to move in with this Hydra Force now. Uh, apply some more pressure. Um, but, yeah, it looks like Best is trying to build up to, you know, that Death Ball style of... Uh, PVZ here, he just wants one big force to be able to to move out. 
Uh, we're gonna need some lurkers for action here. Risky, isn't it, to just be sitting here? Like, the guy just showed you Dark Archon and you're clumped up like that? I'm waiting for the Maelstrom to just land and hit everything. Yeah, a big Maelstrom storm could definitely turn the tide in this game here for best. Yeah, and we've gotten to the point in the game where players are hitting, you know, really sizable armies. It's critical that neither makes a blunder like that. So I think it's smart that action has backed off. He's recovered his his eco quite well. He's recovered his drone count, and he's almost even in supply. But he does lack the lurkers, as we see a couple of them being morphed right now. Ooh, best not even trying to go for a timing. Just immediately moves out to take his third. I like this. Well, Just what what can risky. Zerg do about it? You can't run into the Dark Archon. Yep, definitely can't. Uh, it just means, you know, uh, it just it's the sign of a good player, for sure. Uh, so, fortunately, action's already kind of ahead of him in this step, taking that fourth base at 6 o'clock. Uh, but yeah, soon here, uh, action likely, once he secures this third, will then move out and try to apply some pressure. I would say we are about five minutes away, Machine, from pretty much getting into an epic game because Zerg's on four base, they've got Hive, they're going to start getting those big power spikes, Protoss is going to start hitting, you know, plus three upgrades. Uh, this could turn into a, an epic game that we were expecting to see on Vermeer, but Best, instead, he's thinking about making a move, but look at this, the units from action instantly go for a counterattack, but instant turnaround from Best. And now, Best sees, hey, you've got a sizable army at top left. I'm just going to, you know, cut it off, try and catch these units. Ooh, yeah, he does. he does. Oh, man, that was great. What a nice catch there from Best. Suddenly, action can't be feeling too great. We see a good amount of lurkers being set up to defend that uh, fourth base of his on the high ground. He's going to need them. Well, it is going to be hard to attack into this high ground, like you were saying. Goon, not that ideal versus high ground lurkers with Hydra and Link support plus five tech. But there is a decent amount of AoE. Actually, there's not that much AoE. Is that two Templars and one Dark Archon? I mean, that's not a lot. Yeah, it's not enough, to be sure. I think he needs to back off. Um, still, he's, he's kind of going for it. Good trades, though. He just kind of uh, ended up using the energy on his Templar and then backed off, which I think is very acceptable. Yeah, he didn't lose that much, really. So he is just going to back off, and he is just going to take top middle. So he's going to go four base versus four base. We've got Defiler Mound coming in. It is pretty critical that Action does something about top middle. He can't let this base get up and running for free. So hopefully he can get a cancel. Yeah, it does get a cancel, at least on this Nexus, but... That means this force will be trapped up here. Um, so yeah, best gonna need a fourth base. Probably with that fourth being uh, canceled, should just look to double expo, take 12 and take mid right. Uh, but we'll have to see. And action tried to focus down that probe, but I saw that. <laughs> yeah, it ends up surviving. He tried to min max right there. It, like it is so annoying to lose your worker. You know, going to build an expansion, like. It's an underrated move there. Like you, it delays it 20 seconds. Sometimes action happens out on the map, and you're, you know, end up not building it. And you're like, well, didn't I build it? No, you didn't. And you look back, and you're like, all of a sudden, all in. It was a, it was a cute move from action, but doesn't actually get the, the kill. We've got another link counterattack in top middle though. Looks like there's some zealots in positions. I don't think that this will do much. Uh, yeah, it looks like there are at least some units at 12 o'clock to deal with this. Meanwhile, another counter simultaneously at best third, but that's really just looks like trying to draw best out of yeah. position here. Yeah, it, it, he's trying to make it chaotic and he's doing a good job, but he's not doing damage anywhere. And unless he can do damage to Protoss, uh, you know, with all this gas, they're just going to start scaling into... You know, Mass Archon, Mass Templar, Goon, Zealot, like, you know, the real heavy tech units. And I'm starting to feel like Action's getting in a little of trouble because, yes, he's on yep. four bases, but where's his fifth base going to be? He needs, I mean, I was thinking with all those Hydras bottom right, now's as good a time as any to take bottom right. Oh, he's caught out of position. There's no Lurkers quite in position here. If he gets a good Maelstrom off, this could be tough. I gotta say, that, that Dark Archon hasn't done a single thing this whole yeah. game. 
Yeah. He's the scouting dark archon. He's there for moral support. <laughs> yeah, he is. It would be juicy if he could land it right now on the Mutas, but this army's dead again. Uh, like, like the multitask from action is great, like the you know the nonstop counters, and but he's not getting any damage done. Like, he's just losing units. And oh, actually, I think we have a drop in the main of Zerg. I saw something over there. Was it a storm drop? Looks like those are something sitting over the ledge. Oh yeah, there's no drones there. Looks yeah, like I'm gonna... there was some kind of a storm drop or something. Well, the runaround idea from action, the idea was good, but now we haven't done any damage. In front of his army is max, so here he comes. I imagine he also has plus three. But the Dark Swarm kicks in, Lurker, Ling. You don't want to be fighting into that under Dark Swarm. But there's the Ooh. Maelstrom, finally, double Maelstrom. Stop. Dark Archon falls. Still, though, best could do this all day. They're on even base yeah. count, as you said. It, I mean, it is action's time to get something done. He needs to secure a fifth base, whether that's mid left, bottom right, top left. Uh, if this game continues, he's just going to fall further and further behind. Here we go. Oh, man. Another timing. Well, how, how do you defend this as Zerg? Because look how tiny that choke is. Like, any angle you come into, you're going to get stormed to death, even if you come in behind through the bridges. So, Beth, he's the one that finds the angle, and those are beautiful storms. Amazing. Kills a hatch. So much damage already being done here. And, I mean, he might have to back off just because of the Lurker. Actually, I take that back and just nuked <laughs> everything with that storm. <laughs> yeah, the, the angle is just not good. There's so many storms. Even storms in the back. Lurkers are gonna try and save the day. It doesn't seem like there are any more storms remaining. Okay, Ooh. I think that back hits four Lurker. Yeah, this was, he will lose his army for this, but this was such a nice trade here from Best. Yeah, that was a huge trade for him. But despite the huge trade, look at the supply. Again, it's pretty close, 113 to 93. Action, yes, he lost the hatchery. But his drone count is still decent, his army is still decent. Remember, he's still got Hive. But I guess the problem is, is there's no way he can attack anywhere. Like, he's not attacking top middle. He's not attacking mid right. But I feel like Protoss is just going to start, uh, you know, running away with the game simply because they just have bigger econ. Yeah, I mean, he could attack mid right. There's no storm quite set up there, and he does have Defiler. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's definitely looking to be in favor of best here. Um, especially once he gets these uh, newer bases secured. Five base Brodos versus, I mean, four base Zerg. Yep. Barely four. And it looks like Zerg wants to expand the bottom right. Not sure this is where you really want to expand, but he is going to move over there. And we have like another link counterattack, but it's not going to do any damage. Maybe he gets one so far. Where's the play? Ooh, gets the plague. Just get plague. Filer does a lot of damage. Okay, he, he will get this base at bottom right. Has secured the high ground. I think it's it's good. He needs to have another base, and bottom right is just as good a spot as any. But where he's going to be vulnerable now is once again for that counter attack at his original third base, or maybe even six o'clock, because action's forced to dedicate so many units. Uh, bottom right. Yeah. Got another plague. Didn't hit that much. No okay. observer, so the lurkers will be able to defend this for now. Damn, did you see those upgrades? 2-2-2. Two, two, two. I was not expecting to see upgrades in that order, but he's just gonna match the Zerg upgrades, which are also 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. Probably has 3-3 three, three on the way or something. Should be pretty close. We're 20 minutes into the game, so you're pretty much Ooh, drop inside oh, the main yeah. again. Yep. Right. Well, he, he got a lot of position. He got a lot of drones, by the way, because we were at 51 a moment ago. Now we're at 41, and again we've got another attack to mid left again. This no is observer. oh yeah, no observer. I forgot about that. I was, I was sitting there like waiting for the lurkers to die, but they're just shelling out mass damage. Yeah, I like this though still, like the idea oh. from Best is just putting on more pressure. Man, big flags. Oh, huge storm though. Yeah, Best, I don't know man, he's getting a little sloppy. He's just bleeding some units off for no reason here. 
despite it being Vermeer and him having five gases, at least 50% of his army was Zealots, and they just got murdered by the Mass Lurker Lang. Yeah, the uh, the lur Mass Lurkers are really starting to kind of pay off for action here. I'd like to see a Reaver, to be honest with you, from best. Just a couple Reavers moving around with this force would be a uh, big bonus. Yeah, Reaver, definitely a very strong unit. Obviously very hard to control. Like, you gotta move it with your arm, you gotta dodge the Scourge. You're, you don't have Corsairs anymore, so the Scourge don't just get insta mode down. So it is a hard unit to use with your army, but it could be used greatly defensively at mid-right. Bottom right is actually up for action. I'm surprised that it got up, but he could start nidusing over drones and get that saturated. Yep, exactly. He's got a way to play, his, uh, you know, play himself back into this game. You know, it looks like a nidus is being produced, um, so that's going to be very big for action here. And once it gets a fifth base going, it, you know, the game continues. So I, I feel like. We're seeing some urgency out of best to maybe try to close this one out. Knows he's in a good position. Um, but action is just kind of hanging in there. Yeah, and we've got another big attack. Is there enough, though? That's a lot of Archons. Lost oh, there's no something. He lost his Observer again. Yeah, once again, man. It's just, I mean, it is only one Lurker Whoa. at 6 o'clock, one outside. Uh, wow. Okay. That's a lot of Archons. Where'd all those come yeah. from? <laughs> yeah. And plus three weapon just kicked mm. in, so they're one-shotting links. Like, oh, he just leaves. Yeah, that was... Oh, man. Like I said, he had to hold bottom right there, and he just dedicated so many units to it that he there was inevitably going to be, you know, an open position. Loses 6 o'clock, and Best actually takes a, a big win and a um, good series against Action, you know. Yeah, once again, this series really delivered really exciting games. I guess the one one game that was a little bit disappointing was Game 1, simply because, you know, uh, even that wasn't disappointing because Action had a good recovery. Like, he had a good counterattack, but Best kind of just, you know, was running away with it from the early game. But Best, he wins 2-1. I think Game of the Day was by far Vermeer. That was really a really good game. and For sure. I think this is the third time in a row Best has got the best of action in series. I think he won an ASL twice the last few times they played, and now here again the StarCast TV Start League, he gets the win. It's funny to hear that, right? Against action of all players, yeah. who just phenomenal Zerg vs. Protoss, right? If, if you're just looking at the lineup of players in this tournament, uh, you know, uh, you would say that for potential winners, action has to be in the top three, top five, guaranteed. So for him to go out in the round of 16 just kind of shows, you know, how strong the player pool is in this tournament. Yeah, uh, like I was saying before, this this tournament is literally just like ASL Junior. Like you have everybody in ASL in this tournament, so it's it's no joke. It's it's really tough, and you know, it's funny you mention. Um, action being like a top three top five you know he's actually my dark horse every every tournament of asl because he's just so good like he was on kt rolster i've seen so many games of him versus flash where like they go ultra late game and he actually runs runs over flash i'm like holy smokes man how do you beat this guy but for whatever reason once it gets into tournament play he just generally is like not that this is bad but he's like a round of eight round of 16 player like he, there's just something holding him back from getting into the final stages of the tournament. Yeah, only a round of eight ASL. Yeah, right, yeah. I w <laughs> man, man. Oh, too funny, man. Yeah, he's I, I incredible. Barely, he's a I monster ZVZ too. He yeah, really he's is. crazy. I, I I barely even make round of eight BSL if I even qualify for BSL, you know? So. Yep, yep, exactly, man. Just well, shows how good these players are. <laughs> they're nuts. So. That's it today, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll be back with another cast, which is going to be Beast versus Ample, Terran versus Zerg. That should be exciting, because we know Beast is quite an aggro player, and, well, Ample can be aggro too. So definitely tune in, and we'll see you there.